The good at heart follows the Eberhardt family, and the patriarch of that family, Oscar Eberhardt, is loosely modeled after my own great-grandfather. The story explores some of the choices that a German family might make in the context of not knowing what someone in the family is really doing. By that I mean the main character, or one of the main characters, Oscar Eberhardt, is a member of the Führer's cabinet. I decided to do an imaginative recreation of my great-grandfather. I thought I would explore who he might be through a fictional character. It was an effort on my part to expiate some of the difficult emotions I felt in having a relative that was involved with the Hitler administration. He had been economics minister for the um, previous administration. Hitler asked him to stay on, and as part of that, he had to take an oath of allegiance and swear to be a Nazi. My grandfather was imprisoned in Hamburg in 1946, and his oldest daughter spearheaded an effort to gather information from people that he might know, to ask them for letters of support on his behalf. These were people who were saying, my great-grandfather was a decent honest man. One of the letters I stumbled across details my great-grandfather interceding on behalf of the president of a Jewish company whose son had been sent to Auschwitz. My great-grandfather interceded directly with Göring trying to get this son released. He wanted to do everything in his power to help the laws against Jews be applied in the most lenient way possible. He could not even fathom the possibility that there was a Holocaust coming. The title of The Good at Heart comes from a quote from Anne Frank's diary. The quote from her states, in spite of everything, I still believe that people are really good at heart. The title reflects the effort to remain good at heart even in the face of impossible odds.